Hi, this is Sam Daniel, Fire Investigator and Inspector with the Grapevine Fire Department. Today we're going to be going over fire alarm panels and fire sprinkler systems. Right, today we're going to talk about three different types of sprinkler systems. One being the wet system, two being the dry system, and three is this one, the pre-action system. Pre-action system serves much like a dry system, meaning there's no water in the lines, it's just air. A couple things that will distinguish this, make it a little bit different from the other two, or number one, back here you can see there's a solenoid. So whenever you see this, you know that's a pre-action system. Next, you're not gonna have a flow switch, but instead you're gonna have a pressure switch, which also serves as your alarm. Now predominantly you're gonna be, see these used in more computer rooms, rooms containing servers, and so forth. So this is a pre-action system. All right, the next system we're gonna talk about is the wet system. This is the one you're probably the most familiar with. With a wet system, a couple things you'll notice. Number one, there's always a flow switch right out in front. This flow switch is also what serves as your alarm. Uh, you're also going to notice that there's pressurized water in the lines as opposed to the uh, pre-action and the dry are typically all just air in your lines. So anytime you're hearing water flow through this or seeing this needle bob, you know that you've got water flowing through this. Uh, typically, these are going to be found in your indoor systems. It's going to be anywhere that's heated or with air conditioning. Also with the wet systems, as you'll notice, these are predominantly the most common sprinkler systems. They're gonna be in conditioned places such as heat and AC, hotels, larger businesses, they're indoor systems. All right, and the last and final system that you'll probably run into is the dry system. The thing that's different about the dry system is it's dry. All the lines are dry, there's no pressurized water in the lines. One thing about the dry system is that it also has a presser switch, which serves as the alarm. So whenever that water starts flowing through there, this alarm is going to be activated. It's a lot like the pre-action system. One thing you'll notice between the difference between this and the pre-action system is that there is no solenoid and no flow switch. Another important piece of information with the dry system is that they're typically located in unconditioned areas, such as parking garages outside, or canopies. All right, there are two things in common with each one of these valves. Number one, they're all going to have a main control valve, which you turn to the right to close. They're all generally going to be located right underneath the main valve. So it's the first control valve you see right under the valve. They could be in a butterfly valve. They also could be in an OS and Y valve. And they also could be as a wall post indicator valve, which is always outside. Now to shut all these down, you're gonna just turn them to the right to tighten them. Second thing is the main drain. The main drain is generally gonna to be to the left. The valve is gonna be a little bit larger than the rest of them. And you will turn that to the left to open it up because you'll need to drain the system. Next, we're gonna go over alarm panels. Alarm panels are responsible for the monitoring of all of the systems we just went over, all the sprinkler systems, as well as the smoke detectors and the heat detectors. There are three signals that come from the panel, the alarm, trouble, and supervisory. With the alarm, there's been some sort of detection of a fire or immediate threat to life or property in the building. With trouble, it means that there's something wrong with the system itself. An example might be a loss of the power to a building, changes over to a secondary system power or broken wire in the pathway that feeds back to the panel or initiating device failures. Then supervisory means that there's something abnormal with the system. For instance, tamper switches, monitor switches, or even valve positions. All duct detectors should be supervisory signal and not an alarm signal. So with trouble and supervisory, they're very similar. Both mean that there's something wrong with the system itself and theoretically should not be enough to trigger an actual fire alarm to the alarm office. But unfortunately, due to possible initial panel install mess ups, setups, wrong wiring, could cause them to activate. Either way, you should treat them the same. And with trouble and supervisory, they will clear themselves once the problem is fixed. There are three main buttons on the fire alarm panel that we need to be concerned with. Number one is the acknowledge button. 
By pushing the acknowledge button, you're actually acknowledging the cause of the alarm. However, it only stops the beeping at the panel. The next one is the silence button. You're stating that everything is safe and ready for people to stop evacuating. This stops all audible and visual devices. Advise staff against pushing this button because we haven't ruled out the emergency yet. And lastly is the reset button. When you hit the reset button, you're ready to put everything back into its normal state. This resets all of the devices involved in the alarm back to their original normal condition. The first alarm we're going to cover is a water flow alarm. Once you've determined the cause of the alarm and identified the problem and are ready to reset the panel, the first button you're going to push is the acknowledge. This will silence the panel. The next one you're going to do is the silence button. That will silence the remainder of the building. And lastly, you'll reset the system when you're ready. Push and hold until you hear a beep. The next example is a trouble alarm. With the trouble alarm, we're going to hit the acknowledge button first, similar to the original fire or water flow alarm. We're going to hit silence. And then we can attempt to reset, but the alarm won't be reset until the actual problem is fixed by a licensed technician that was called out by the company. The next example is a supervisory alarm. We'll treat the supervisory alarm similar to the trouble alarm. We'll acknowledge first, then hit silence, then we can attempt to reset more than likely, due to a control valve issue or a low air alarm, we'll need a licensed technician to be brought out by the company to fix the problem before the alarm can be reset. When there's an alarm, make your best effort to find the issue. If no issue or hazard can be found, then acknowledge, silence, and attempt to reset the system. If the system can't be reset, then ask the owner or building representative to contact the monitoring company to place the system on test. As for Firewatch, it's up to your discretion. Contact the alarm office to notify the on-call investigator if Firewatch is implemented and if any other questions or concerns need to be addressed.